in the wind industry, a turbine standing still often means one thing, waiting for parts that should be readily available. This week on the Uptime Spotlight, we're joined by Lars Benson of AC883, which is based in Canada. AC883 has direct connections to manufacturers in Denmark where most critical wind turbine components are actually produced. Lars shares how site operators can cut costs and dramatically reduce downtime by bypassing the OEM middlemen and sourcing parts directly from the original suppliers. Welcome to Uptime Spotlight, shining light on wind energy's brightest innovators. This is the progress powering tomorrow. Lars, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Well, spare parts is a huge issue all over the world, but it seems like in the U.S. and Canada, there's always a shortage. They're looking for spare parts. They don't know where to get them. And the easy answer has been to call the original equipment manufacturer in terms of the GE, Vestas, Siemens Gamesa, Nordex, whoever that may be, and just to place an order. But there are other opportunities out there what happens when a wind site in Texas just decides to buy from the wind turbine manufacturer? How much are they paying, overpaying for that part? Well, I can't say exactly uh, in, in, on, uh, on, on dollars and cents, but, uh, but we, know the, we know the markup from the OEMs. And they're, they're not shy of earning money on that, those parts. And um, yeah, so it's, it's very simple. Uh, we can get those parts directly from Europe. Uh, directly from the suppliers to the OEMs. Yeah, and if I'm an operator, and I haven't been over to Denmark to look at the situation there, a significant number of critical parts are actually manufactured in Denmark or in the surrounding areas, but you, you have no way of knowing that if you own the turbine. That's true. You don't. Somehow the OEMs have been really good and keep it a bit of cloud, cloudy around that area. It's actually pretty simple. They all produced... Uh, uh, either in uh, in Denmark or in Germany, for basically all turbines. Um, GE turbines is a target turbine from Germany that uh, that they bought back when. Uh, so that's very similar. That's a German turbine as well. It's not a U.S. turbine at all. And the supply chain has remained that way for a long time. Well, it's ABP parts. It's uh, standard parts. There's no rocket science in it. Of course, there's some legacy, some some software parts and stuff that we could be desk, some what we call it uh, electronic boards with software on. Of course, we can't do that. And that's that's fair enough, right? That's that's actually where the OEM adds, adds value. So that's totally good. I think part of the reason that you see this this that gap there in the industry is the simple fact that, and, I, and don't take this as a slight, Lars, because I love your website and what you guys do for marketing and branding, <laughs> but. In that corner of the world, and Alan, you and I were just talking about this. A couple of a couple of German German companies were talking about. They're not that good at at global branding and global marketing as a, as a unit, like culturally. So you don't see really what's going on almost behind that curtain. As an American, when you log in and go like, "I need some brakes," or "I need this," or whatever, you don't see that manufacturer's website pop up. You may see an AC eight eighty three pop up that says, "Hey, we we have we sell spare parts." Um, but you just don't, as an, as an American and, and to be honest with you, running around the United States, talking to all these wind site operators, they're so dang busy with their day-to-day -day life and solving the, putting out the fires and the problems that they have every day that they don't have time to go search for that stuff. So what do they do? They just call their procurement or the person that they know. And they say, Hey, get me this. And if they end up overpaying for 10, 20, 50% or whatever, whatever, it got the turbine back up and running because uptime is king. So, I mean, what what else are you guys doing to kind of strategically work with your clients and your customers to make sure that they don't have to do that? Well, generally speaking, I agree with well, larger countries, let, let it be Germany, let it be the US, let it be Canada, uh, they have such a big inner market. They are horrible in doing export, generally speaking. They're not good at it. They're really good at producing stuff and doing the, the care of their own stuff. Uh, Denmark, I think, is 97% is export or being produced in Denmark, something like that. Because we are five, 5 million people, there's no inner market. We need to get out there. Where the market, inner market in the U.S. and Canada and Germany is so big, we don't, we don't need export. Uh, well, we're not really good at it. Uh, and don't call Canada U.S. export. It's not export. 
is the inner market so far. The turnaround times from the OEMs tends to be slow if they have the part in stock. And there's so much demand at, for some specific parts that they don't always don't have it sitting on a shelf to send to you, which is a huge problem. So you have to develop a subsequent chain, a supply chain, and why not go right to the source, which is going to be in Denmark for the most part? Why not do that as it, it, to source the actual part instead of an imitation part or a refurbished part, which I've seen more of recently? You can actually get the real part. It still surprises me sometimes. We had an OEM uh, last year. They just closed their warehouse for three months. We just closing them. We cannot supply for three months. How is that going to work? This wasn't a European summer thing, was it? Uh, no, that would only be six weeks. That's only six weeks. <laughs> no, it was actually in the, in the fall, I think it was. And they just decided to close it for three months. Uh, and I don't understand that. So OEM said earn zero dollars on the turbines itself. They're earning money on the service and the parts. Look at the accounting on Vessels and Seams Road. They're earning no money. It's only on their aftermarket. And Vessels, in all fairness, are extremely good at it. Really good at it. They have 75% of whatever the accurate number is covered uh, of their fleet with service and parts. It's great. So we're not hunting as much Vessels because why would we find that needle in the haystack where you could say that Siemens and, and GE, well, they have less percentage, way less, maybe half of that, depending on countries, et cetera, uh, and areas. But but still, again, how can you allow yourself to just close your warehouse for three months? Wow, that's crazy. Dude, let me ask you something about that Vesta, the, the, the Vesta's setup. Because in my mind, okay, I, I worked with a Danish company, very process-driven, very controlled. There was step changes and gates and, you know, everything was mapped out very well in how the company operated. So... Do you believe that the one of the reasons that Vestas may have a really good control of spare parts, inventory, and the direct connection to those sites is because they sign those 20, 25, even 30-year FSAs? Is it all based on this this overarching business model that that encompasses that, and the others aren't, just aren't doing that? I don't know. I think it's. Uh, I think everybody wants to do it. That's just my two cents. I'm not an expert in that area, but my two cents is that that, that Vestas has the power to demand that. And they are not selling any new wind farms without a service contract. Whatever it's 5, 10, 15, they do not. Where some of the uh, winds are smaller, they have less power. The they owners say, you know what, that's all well and good, but they're not going to buy your turbines. And then uh, GE and, uh, and, and Siemens has to cave in a little bit, right? That's my two cents. I think strategically, like GE with... Having expanded in their service thing and then now changing it to the hub and spoke model, like I think that it, and this is my two cents, right? I think GE saw some bloat in what was happening and service, and I'm not gonna say parts because I don't think that's true, but service and this FSA. And I think that GE is actually strategically pulling back from signing these FSAs, and because some of the stuff with you know, we've heard horror stories with, and this isn't just GE, it's kind of all the OEMs with you know, L, uh, liquidated damages, catching up with people and those kind of things because they don't have access to spare parts. So they don't have access. They don't have the service people to get out there quick enough. Um, so it's a, there's a, there's a large problem in the industry. And I, th I would say that if you're a wind farm operator or when site supervisor, technician, whatever it is, at some point in time, you felt the pain of not having that spare part that you need to get your turbine up and running. And that's where AC 83 comes into play. Uh, yeah, I agree, but I also believe that some uh, some some owners are too small that the OEMs even care. We have seen some horrible examples that you know they could care less. That salesperson sold that wind farm. That's it. He couldn't care less, and the aftermarket people sitting in Denmark, and they are they're closing at four o'clock. Eastern time, and that's four o'clock. It's not four ten. It's four o'clock. So if you're in the central part of the United States, you need to be on the phone by 7.30 a.m. Otherwise, you're not getting your stuff. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, or uh, on Fridays, it's close by noon. So forget about it. You get an answering machine. So you can't even call on Fridays. <laughs> so that happens. Uh, we have a policy. We pick up, We always pick up the phone. We always answer our emails. And we don't have an out of office. Not on purpose, at least. It doesn't exist. So, <laughs> so I think it's more... I will, be available and go the extra mile instead of just sitting for a number. There are might be pit cylinders. Let's take an example of that. 
There's four different vendors with the same A9 B number from Siemens. There are four different A9 B, uh, sorry, producers of A9 B XXX. So you can pick the most expensive one, you can pick the cheapest one, pick whatever you want. And there's probably a reason uh, something, a correlation between uh, quality and price. Often there is. Um, so yeah. It's 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 about knowing those uh, manufacturers and and have access to them, yeah. And we are, I think we're pretty good at it. Yeah, as a, as I'm I'm going to put my my wind farm operator hat on. For me, through for me that that's that triangle: good, good, fast, and cheap. Pick two, right? That's what I always look at. Two out of three. Yeah. So, but having someone in the corner like AC eighty three that knows, hey, uh, hey Lars, I need this part. Great. Okay, I can get it from one of these four people. Here's the cost for all four of them. Here's the quality of our opinion and the track record we've seen. And here's the lead time, because that's always the big one, right? If it's, a, if it's a reactive situation where I need a part now, which we hope we're not doing as much reactive as proactive. But if it's a reactive part and I need it now, I need to get that turbine back up and running. You guys have the answers to those questions. Yeah, I think I agree with you. That, that's the reactive uh, part of it. And that happens um, scarily. It actually happens a lot. And I think we are back to what you said on before that everybody is so lean that site manager don't have that extra person to source those parts. And all of a sudden we have a turbine down, we're missing one animal meat for $500. How can that happen? And of course you could be unlucky as well. I totally get that part. Uh, we're trying to be more proactive. So if we have a major owner, they have 20 or 30 sites because you see they use the same parts, all of them. So why don't we bundle our procurement instead of taking one off all the time? Uh, we're spending a ton of time on one off, $500 uh, uh, procurement, and it takes too much time and it's too expensive for everybody involved. Uh, there are some uh, suppliers now, I got actually hit by it, some suppliers in uh, in Denmark now, they have a minimum order order quantity or you get a, you get a fee, extra fee on it. So you cannot order a one animal meter, use as an example, without a say, $250 or $300 uh, fee on it for handling the order. So we've seen that as well. So reactive is is a lot of where the market sits. But how are you guys working with customers to be more proactive in their strategies for spare parts? Well, as um, um, in the back office, uh, so Yannick and Sydney, et cetera, they're extremely data-driven. So we can see the history of, of, of what have been uh, quoted, what have been ordered what pricing has been ordered, when was it, et cetera. So we know the history. I said, why do you see we are buying 40? Why do you buy one or two at a time? And even if that person cannot do it, we're still going to buy five or 10. So we have something. That helps our, uh, what I call it, uh, procurement power. And then we leave, we leave it on stock. Of course, we're trying to avoid has too much in stock. And we do not want to have obsolete parts either. So, <laughs> So that's the kind of the balance we are, we are finding, right? Lars, can you give me a sense of what kind of parts you can uh, acquire from the original equipment manufacturer in Denmark? We just set up a big uh, agreement with one of the main, uh, the major filter the suppliers. So now we have A9, B numbers for all filters in the world. And for Western's filters, we have, we have all filters. And it's a fraction of the price we're paying today. A fraction. Pit cylinders, uh, motors, gears, etc. We are staying away from uh, major components. We're staying away from uh, from gearboxes, generators. Happy to supply main shaft and, and bearings for Siemens two three because that's the focal point. Uh, so that's that's we could do that. But gearboxes, generators, um, it's not worthwhile for for us to do it. We don't add any value. You can get that part. It's just a part number. We can't add any value at all. Uh, so we started staying away from it. Uh, we don't want to take the risk for a small portion of dollars. And if I'm sitting at a wind site and I'm, I'm getting requests for a specific part, how does that process work? So I'm, I'm calling Sydney at your site or, go, or getting a hold of you on LinkedIn. And then how, how does that work? How does that procurement system work? How do, how do you navigate that? Because it sounds like you have some uh, of the parts sitting on the shelf, some you have to go, go acquire and negotiate. What's that process look like? The process is that uh, you'll get an email. Uh, well, we got your RFQ. We're working on it right now. You'll get an email within an hour that we have it. Don't we? We won't leave you high and dry. We're responding, and then we're gonna source it right off the bat. 
if you don't have it. And within a day or two, you will have an answer back with a bit uh, price and lead time. Okay, so that's a really short response time because usually it takes several days to get someone to re return that phone call. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. Availability is key, right? It's availability to the parts. Uh, the availability is key, and it goes for the parts as well. You just said lead time. Uh, we get way shorter lead time by calling the manufacturers directly. Way shorter lead time. And the, the obviously the equipment manufacturers must have stock on the shelf that they have to do that. So that those parts do exist. We just didn't know where to find them until we called AC eighty three. That's that's a story that you hear a lot in the United States, right? Again, Alan and I travel and always went from oh these there was this, some German guys here, there were some Danish guys here. It's always German and Danish. We had to get these special bolts from Germany, or we had this. So so now now everybody has their own Danish guy that they can call Lars. That person, <laughs> yeah, that has the connections to 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 the mainland, to the motherland that can get these things for him. Because that's tr that's that's the troubling part. Like we said, you don't have time. The procurement is is tough. Strategic procurement is difficult. Even people that are doing procurement at a large scale in an organization, say you're in the back office and you're the procurement person, they're dealing with so many things that to find this one part at one of these few manufacturers over in Denmark, that's difficult. So now you have uh, you know every, everybody that's listening here has the connection to that that Dane that uh, has the connections over there and, and can get it done for him. Well, one of the big criticism in the United States and Canada is that when uh, anybody drives by a wind farm and, and you see turbines not operating, uh, it's just, it's a knock on the industry. And the uh, most times that is occurring is because they're waiting for a spare part, honestly. Uh, real simple stuff. Filters, for example, is a good good one, right? And parts that they can't get the hold of, but they, they just don't know how to acquire them. And now that they listen to the podcast, this is the way to do it. You call ours, you call Sydney at AC883, and you get this process started. And then at that same moment, I, I know Sydney is really sharp. She's going to provide you the list of things you can get. So she, you tell her, hey, I got a GE 2X machine. She says, well, here's the list of parts we can get for you. Wow, that just saved my life for most procurement people. And that's a person, you know, Sydney is now your friend for life because she is saving you a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of hassle, which is the point, right? This is why everybody goes AC83 because it's simple, easy to get things done. Lars, how does uh, an operator, a, a site supervisor, a procurement person get a hold of you to start ordering some of their spare parts through AC883? Well, we have a website, ac883.com, or, or my email, lars at ac883.com. Mm. And you can also reach Lars and AC883 at contact at ac883.com. Uh, the website's great. So get a hold of Lars, get a hold of Sydney, get your projects moving again. Lars, thank you so much for being back on the program. We love having you. Thank you. Thanks, Marcelo.